And tonight we're coming to you from Phoenix College near downtown Phoenix for exciting National Junior College football as the Phoenix College Bears come in with a record of four and one and they'll be playing host to the winless Scottsdale Fighting Artichokes at 0-3. Mike Caratanuto, Jeff Lowry, welcome to our broadcast here tonight. Mike, uh, two teams going in different directions this year. Uh, that has not been the case for Phoenix College. They've won four games this year, and that matches their total win total over the last four years. Yeah, Coach Dan Cazetto in his second year. Win this last year, his first year as head coach, a lot of experience. But like you said, Jeff, four wins, four and 32 in a three-year span. They're four and oh now, and hey, nothing better than the future for Phoenix College, and should be a great game tonight. And it's a must win for Scottsdale, obviously. Now, Phoenix College comes in here. Like I said, they're four and one by way of record. They defeated Glendale last week, 31 to 30. Dan Cassetto, his second year. And, you know, tell us a little bit about this guy. Yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of experience. Like I said, I mean, graduated from Idaho, knew he wanted to coach right away. He played there 12 years at Idaho, worked with Dennis Erickson, worked with uh, Bruce Snyder at ASU. I mean, obviously very experienced, knows the Pac-12, Washington, Cal, Oregon State. So he brings all that wealth of knowledge to the junior college level. He'll always talk about discipline, being an offensive line guy. They're in the top 10 in offense nationally. I mean, you talked about the huge right. improvement, obviously the four wins, Jeff. Top 10 in offense nationally. And Quinton Garrett, man, this kid, no matter who's playing quarterback, they've rotated two in, Jeff. But Quinton Garrett in the top five in every receiving category in the conference. And more importantly, number one in sniffing the end zone, five receiving touchdowns for Quinton Garrett. So Scottsdale's going to have their hands full with this great receiver for Phoenix College. And last week when Scottsdale, who lost to Pima down in Tucson, they fumbled the ball late in the game, which eventually cost them the game. But uh, obviously they had some issues in the secondary. You look at Quentin Garrett, he might be looking at his chops here tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And for Scottsdale, I mean, and Coach Doug Mendowski, he's a head coach in his 11th season, Jeff. He is a defensive coordinator. He is a guy that, I mean, his nickname is Mad Dog. And his defenses over the years, as we've seen, have taken his personality because they're not dirty, but they're physical. They're going to get in your, try and get in your face all night. And no one more than Maurice Burton this year. He's got interest from ASU. He's been playing so well, obviously, locally here. Maurice Burton doing a great job. Just about five, four and a half, five sacks on the season for Burton. So if this secondary wants to have a chance, like you just said, against Garrett, it's going to start up front with Burton and his friends on that defensive line for Scottsdale because if they don't get pressure, no matter who's in that quarterback for Phoenix, like you said, Quentin Garrett, you give him an extra two, three seconds, you're not, you're not going to cover him. Doug Madosky is the head coach of Scottsdale. He's been here for 11 seasons. Scottsdale's been in the last three Valley of the Sun Bowls, which is the championship bowl game that is held here in the first week of December amongst the four Maricopa schools. They're coming off a 34-33 loss, as I said earlier, down in Tucson to Pima. They've really struggled, but they got certainly one of the premier players in the league in Sal Canella, a great tight end. Yeah, and in the last meeting against Phoenix College, he didn't play. So again, yeah. offensively, it was a seven point game, 38-31, high scoring, like we're accustomed to seeing in this conference and from Scottsdale. And another thing about Scottsdale, you talk about Coach Madowski, but offensively, they lost Tommy Ziegler. And we know what a great play caller he was, the flow he had, but their quarterbacks coach, Cody Sokol, WSFL fans, Scottsdale fans might remember him, played here at SEC and was under Coach Ziegler. So yeah, it's not the same. You got to get into a flow. It's his first year of coaching. But yeah, having Canella back will be huge for this artichoke offense because that's going to be their best defense is keeping the Phoenix College offense off the field in Quentin Garrett. Well, Scottsdale comes in here, a lot of freshmen. If you look at their roster up and down, quite a few freshmen. So uh, obviously, they needed to win probably one of those first three because from here on out for both schools, it's, the schedule is really tough. They have yet to play any of the non-Maricopa schools as of now. Yeah, and Arizona Western, again, of course, off to a great start. We know what Coach Minnick has done down there in Yuma. Obviously, snow's going to be tough. And number one in the country. Number one in the country. Yeah, they moved up to number one this week. And if you look at it, too, Eastern, we know they're going to run the ball. They always have the biggest offensive line. So if you can't eke out wins early, you're right. The, the back half of the schedule, very tough for, well, everybody. But like you said, the Maricopas and Phoenix and Scott, Maricopa of schools and Phoenix and Scottsdale as well. Right. So when we come back, all the exciting play-by-play -play of National Junior College football, it's Scottsdale and Phoenix on MCTV Sports.
All right, welcome back to Scottsdale and Phoenix College here, National Junior College. Mike Caratanudo, we got Ashley Neville down on the sideline. Uh, must win situation here for Doug Madoski's fighting artichokes. Yeah, even though that it's a non-conference game, but 0-3 for the artichokes, we talked about it. Three straight Valley of the Sun Bowl appearances for uh, Scottsdale Community College. But again, Phoenix College, a new coach, Coach Cazetto and Jeff, both you and I guilty in that, forgetting Phoenix College in the – NJCA top 20 came in at number 19, number 19 last week. Western and Snow, obviously Arizona Western, you mentioned the number one team in the country. But, uh, yeah, big for Phoenix College. And we talked to Coach Gazzetto, man. He seems calm, but there's a, he's Italian, so we know he's got a little fire, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So we're getting set for the opening kickoff here and our season premiere here on MCTV Sports and uh, in our new booth cam this year. Uh, I'm glad you're up here. I mean, you, you add a little class to the broadcast oh. as Phoenix College will receive the opening kickoff as Scottsdale won the toss and elected to defer. Phoenix will be moving from left to right on your television, defending the north goal. And the Scottsdale Fighting Artichokes, led by Eric Lopez, their outstanding kicker. He's had a fine season. He has been perfect in terms of point after touchdowns and field goals. Now, these two teams met two weeks ago, Michael. 38-31 uh, to 31 was the score in that game in favor of Phoenix College, off to their best start since 2009. And as we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, this is a program that has won just four games over the last four seasons. Yet here in 2016, they start off at four and one. Yeah, and Coach Gazzetto telling us last year, I mean, he got hired so late, really didn't get to recruit. Um, some players got released, some players not happy maybe with the new coaching change, which everybody, hey, has their right, Jeff. And, but uh, they brought some guys in and a lot of qualifiers, and he's like, hey, if they're one and done and we're winning, I'm happy. Well, here's she from the seven-yard line. He had a 95-yard touchdown return for touchdown in their first matchup. He's out of bounds near the 37-yard line, and a gain of close to 30 yards on the play, and this game is underway. Well, we talked about him, Jeff, obviously coming onto the field. And for Phoenix College, Josh Eckley, the quarterback. But, yes, Quentin Garrett watching him in pregame. He, uh, he snagged some, uh, some passes down on that field. You know, a light coverage. I know you're obviously not going to pressure your team. So a little bit of pressure there, but he's, he's coming up with the ball. On first down, Eckley hands off. And a nice run over the right side to the 40, right up to the 45-yard line as they feature Zach Smith, who had 100 yards in last week's game. Scottsdale. The Artichokes coming in here 0 and 3, 0 and 2 in conference play. They've been in the last three Valley of the Sun Bowls. As we mentioned, they lost 38-31 two weeks ago to Phoenix College. That was a conference game. Tonight's is not. Last week, a very disappointing loss at the hands of the Pima team down in Tucson, uh, where they had the ball on the three yard line of Pima and fumbled and eventually lost and that came late in the ball game. Here's a first down run for the Bears, the host team here near downtown Phoenix. Yeah, Zachary Smith he featured there. He talked about Jeff on the first two carries. He's uh, fifth in the conference coming in this game with uh, 200 yards rushing even. He's fourth in uh, yards per game at 66.7, but more importantly, Jeff, averaging almost five yards per carry is Smith. So he picks up the first down after a gain of six. Ball resting at midfield out of the shotgun. Eckley will screen it out to the near side and Knox with some blocking and actually had the ball stripped away near the Scottsdale 45 yard line. But it's enough for the first down and 16 yards. The ball was stripped away. I was gonna say by Gary Mc, uh, looked like Gary McKay, though, Gary McKay is listed as a wide receiver. Sometimes guys changing positions, but I like this drive what Phoenix College is doing, Good featuring Zach Smith, putting the ball up, and Robin Flugrad, the, uh, the offensive coordinator, passing coordinator, worked with Coach Cazetto, coach against Coach Cazetto as well. And uh, 
He had some potent offenses at, at U of A, at, uh, at Washington, or at, pardon me, U of A. That was bad, Jeff. ASU, Damn. Coach Flew grad, Washington State. And uh, believe me, a guy that had a lot of talented receivers and quarterbacks, he knows how to mix it up in running backs. So uh, I like this start, Phoenix College. An offensive line looking solid early on, firing off the ball and uh, dictating the line of scrimmage. Nice play there by Zach Olegi for the Scottsdale Fighting Artichokes. No gain on the play, and it brings up second down and 10. No score just inside the 13-minute mark, and we've got some movement on the line. Most likely, well, that's going to be offsides against the defense. Well, Coach Madowski not going to be happy with that as a team. The Bears having a good drive. You don't want to uh, aid them into getting uh, easy yards that they don't have to earn. So a five-yard penalty moves them to the 29. Second down and five, 12.50 on the clock. First quarter action, National Junior College football. The give goes to Zach Smith, lowers the pads and gets it down to about the 26-yard line. Only a three-yard pickup and a good stick in there by Boston Sanders out of uh, one of the great powerhouse teams, defending champions, Division I Centennial Coyotes in Peoria. Yeah, back-to-back -back state champions going for a third in a row this year. Now they're back in, uh, in 5A. But, yeah, Boston Sanders, that kid knows how oh, to hit. Yeah. And, uh, well, you saw it last year. You know he can, he can definitely uh, deliver the lumber. Absolutely. And laying some thunder and getting into that backfield was Maurice Fairfield. Out of Chicago, Illinois, he made the initial hit on the ball carrier and the forward progress, no gain on the play. So now you're looking at a fourth down and two and decision time here for Phoenix College. Well, they, well, wow, not really. They sent the field goal unit out right away. Jeff, which I was about to say, I would probably go for it, but with the way that, left, again, I was going to highlight, man, the left side of that offensive line, your center, I mean, Daniel Cruz, but the left guard, Cameron Lewis, and Big, uh, his twin brother, Spencer Lewis, number 77. These kids are huge. So Dylan Brown comes on, and normally a chip shot for him, and it is no good from 43 yards out. And so with 11.29 left to play here in the first quarter, we are still scoreless. Uh, Dylan Brown saw a lot of him uh, the last three years at Hamilton, and uh, a little surprised on that one as we will take it to a break. We're scoreless. Arizona, ramp up your career in technology industries with a degree or certificate through Maricopa Community Colleges. Industrial maintenance, automation, machining, and welding careers are in high demand and pay well. Go to rampupaz.com to find out how to get the career and paycheck you've always wanted. Start making up to $40,000 or more in as little as nine months. Be in demand, enroll now. Classes start soon at Maricopa Community Colleges. Visit rampupaz.com to learn more. Scoreless tie here, Phoenix College, and the first possession for Doug Madoski's fighting artichokes, and it's a run play straight ahead to the 29, a gain of three. Yeah, Jeff, the wrap up on Brown, yeah, very. it looks like he kind of chunked that kick a little bit as he got maybe a little bit too much of the, the turf. He got under it. But I, I was wrapping up Spencer Lewis, Cameron Lewis, Daniel Cruz, the left side of that line for Phoenix College. Look for uh, look for um, them to keep rushing to that side back on offense because they are, they are pushing around the SEC defensive line. Well, Micah Campos really took a hit that time by Emilio Rodriguez, a six foot, 190 pound safety out of Verado High School. And now looking at a third down and three after a gain of close to five. To the air, and this is Bunch, the Tennessee native, and throwing incomplete and trying to hook up that time with his receiver, Alex Jackson Jr., who's been one of their top weapons this year. And it's a three, a very quick three and out for Scottsdale. Yeah, definitely didn't want that. Happy that Phoenix College didn't get points, but again, they, uh, they will put their defense right back on the field. And it will be tough as uh, again, Phoenix College with a chance to maybe capitalize and get some points because their offense, again, very fluid. That first drive, as we saw, line doing a great job, uh, pass protecting, run blocking, but just no points. So Sheehy on the return, very, very dangerous. This is a great punt. He picks it up and really didn't have much choice at the 13, and it was just outstanding coverage on the far side 
by Scottsdale. Yeah, normally you wouldn't want a kick returner to do that, Jeff, on the bounce. He got it at over, thought it was going to go out, but I got to say, actually, as much as I wouldn't be in favor, very heads up play there by Sheehy because he probably could have lost seven or eight more yards if he let that ball keep bouncing and it went out of bounds, probably would have landed out about the five yard line. So a 53 yard punt, no return, and now the second possession of the game for the Phoenix College Bears. They go with the fly sweep, and Scottsdale was all over it. And 56 will be credited with the tackle, a couple of others in on the play, but it was um, Marquise Clayton, a 308 pound nose guard, getting in there, but it was a good seal on that left side of the defense for Scottsdale. Well, and Scottsdale, again, we talked about that in pregame defensive line, playing that 3-4, playing that but standing both of their ends up. And they're going to have to try and confuse this offensive line. Zach Smith around the left edge. He gets the corner, and he will eventually be brought down on the play on that far side by number two, and that's Anthony Ramirez. Not before he picks up about five or six on the play, and now the quarterback on third and short in a hurry-up offense goes around the right edge. And after the tackle by Sanders, a fresh set of downs for the Bears. They're in a hurry-up offense. Well, Coach Flugrad saw something he liked in that first drive. They were moving the ball, decided he wanted to, uh, to pick up the tempo, and Eckley looks like he has no problem handling that. But more importantly, Jeff, I mean, I hate to sound like a broken record early in the game, but this offensive line setting the tempo, they're reestablishing the line of scrimmage almost every snap. Haven't had a lot, but these first two drives, they're doing a heck of a job up front. So now you got trips left featuring Sheehy. Four receiver set. Now Sheehy going in motion and on play action, and they flush the quarterback out of the pocket in trouble from behind, and down he goes. It's a quarterback sack. Good pursuit from the weak side, Chris Jules. Well, I compliment him, but that time they did a good job of stretching the play out. Jeff, and again, when you're playing that 3-4, but you're standing both your ends up, a little bit different. See if it throws off the offensive line. Sometimes it will, but at the same time, their edge protection there, very solid both, both times. And Zach Smith, you mentioned a little bit more success as you see kind of almost with that zone blocking scheme as he just gets through the hole and then gets to make a cut and make a decision. Second down and 13 from their own 28. They fake the counter and now swing it out to the far side of the field. And there's Quentin Garrett, the leading receiver in the Western States Football League here in the early goings, the Tempe native, 5'11", 170 pounds. And Scottsdale came on the blitz that time. Looked like almost an A-gap or B-gap blitz, pardon me. And Eckley just got rid of the ball in time. Zach Smith, the single setback, flanking his quarterback. Josh Eckley, 6'1", 180 pounds. He has thrown for over 1,100 yards this year, and he's back to the air on third and nine. He's in trouble, slips a would-be quarterback sack and rifles it complete to the Phoenix College 46-yard line where it's caught by Birch, and then he had it stripped away, but the question was whether or not he was down, and the officials confirmed the call. Yeah, that was a bang-bang play, and without replay, Jeff, just to the to the naked eye, it seemed that he what his knee was down, but, man, he's got a – I know coming over the sideline, they're going to talk to him about, hey, make the catch in traffic, but secure the ball. As again, Phoenix College mixing it up but moving the ball well. Eight minutes and ten seconds. Clock stops with the moving of the chains. A fresh set of downs from the 45 after – or the 46 after a 14-yard pass play, Eckley to Birch. Eckley out of the shotgun, fakes the inside handoff and taking it around the left edge, slips the tackle and gains close to nine yards, a yard shy of the line to gain. And you look at uh, what Josh Eckley can do with his legs, it's very impressive so far. Yeah, was, uh, that was a mini um, uh, Manny Wilkins imitation there. He didn't hurdle the defender, but he just jumped over him, Jeff, and picked up, set an extra few yards, giving him a second and, well, long one, almost two yards here. No score, 7.29 left to play here. Opening quarter. Now they go trips right 
And they're going to set up a bubble screen. And here is Garrett and a nice stutter step move. He breaks loose. He's down inside the 40 to the 37-yard line, a gain of nine and a first down. And, Jeff, on a play like that, we talked in pregame about them having to can get pressure on the quarterback, on Eckley, to not give him a chance to go downfield to Garrett. But look at that. Garrett makes the catch and describing it perfectly there. He makes one little sidestep, makes the defender miss. The secondary's got to wrap him up on initial contact or it's going to be a long night for them. So first down and 10. Ball resting at the 35. Quick pass to the far side. That was a nice defensive play by Olegi on the far side. That could have went for a lot more as the pass intended for Desmond Daniels was complete. But Eckley, again, rolling to actually his left, so going against the green, Jeff, but the left side of that offensive line, they tried to send an extra guy and pretty much uh, their left guard and left tackle. Two guys blocked three, and he was able just to guide that pass out into the flat to pick up a few yards. This is the 11th play of the drive and the run going straight ahead and just a big pile of dust there led by number 31, Chris Jules, his second tackle of the day, the 216-pound freshman out of Centennial High School. And... He's got a couple of state championship rings in his cabinet. Yeah, both him and Boston Sanders, uh, they do there for the Coyotes. Richard Taylor and his staff doing a great job out there. And with plenty of time, the quarterback launches one into the back of the end zone, and it is incomplete. It was pretty good coverage, but it was a great, great pass. And unfortunately for number two, Marcus Na or rather uh, check that Ramirez with the good coverage over there, it's incomplete. Yeah, as we check out the replay, look at that. Eckley direct in traffic, just about gets crushed, throws it down the middle, and well, it just goes long out of the end zone. So Phoenix College, who attempted a 43-yard field goal their first time, are facing fourth down and six, a line to gain to 25. No score, first quarter action with 6.20 on the clock. And they're not going to get this play off, and that's going to be a delay a game no, against. No, it, it looks, sorry, Jeff, it looks no, like the headlines the gave out. Phoenix College a timeout. So he got the timeout with 6.20 left to go here. And, there's, and there is no score, Scottsdale against Phoenix. And today's game is brought to you by the Maricopa Community Colleges. By Scottsdale Community College. Phoenix College, located in downtown Phoenix. And by Cox Communications. Maricopa College's television is bringing you today's action as we come to you from Phoenix College in downtown Phoenix. Mike Caratanudo, Ashley Neville, Jeff Lowry. No score. 6.20 left to go here in the opening quarter. And uh, so far, Phoenix has been able to uh, move the ball with extreme success down the field, but it's been a, somewhat of a bend but don't break defense for Scottsdale. Yeah, again, the missed field goal, but and Coach Gazzetto there, his staff, seeing the play clock running down, takes the timeout. And so they're going to go for it. Eckley stepping up in the pocket, thought about running, instead fires to the far side, and it is complete. What a heads-up play by Eckley, Jeff, right there as he stepped up. I mean, you said it. Somehow he just stopped his feet because another two and a half, another uh, two and a half yards. He's across the line of scrimmage. That's an illegal forward pass, but he stops and delivers a laser for the first down. He's been elusive so far, and he's back to pass on first down and ten. He's in trouble. Gets out of it. Launches one to the far side and incomplete as he tries to hook up with Daniels, who had a catch earlier in the game. Yeah, for Desmond Daniels again, and good position there. But Eckley even getting pressure. Very impressed with this young man, Jeff, as you see on the replay there. Look at that. Somehow he doesn't go down. They're grabbing his ankles to the sidelines, and Daniels actually puts one arm up because, you know, if he didn't, Jeff, you see on the replay here, that thing could have been picked off from the backside. As we come back to live action, an incomplete pass will bring up a third down and 10. So the seventh, 16th play of this drive is coming up here for Phoenix College, and always... When you have a long sustained drive like this, coaches on the other side are worried about tiring out at your defense. Yeah, but inevitably, if they can hold them here to a field goal attempt, that's a huge, huge victory for the Scottsdale defense. 
So Zach Smith, the 5'9", 180-pounder out of Illinois, Lombard, Illinois, flanking the quarterback. Four receivers set, short yardage past the old hitch and ladder, and it is going to be good enough for the first down. How about that? A play out of the old, old playbook. Old playbook, and that was a heck of a pitch. Zach Smith gets it, but look at the replay. Eckley delivers. He's, it's caught, and he gets drilled. Does Brandon Fisher, but somehow he's able not to launch it high. And Smith Ooh. was the recipient, and now the ball comes loose, and I think they're going to say this is Scott Stills' ball. And Jeff Eckley just got absolutely hammered that, er, hammered that time as he was rolling to the right, and he's grabbing his, uh, his left shoulder. He just kind of reached up. But, man, rolling out to his right the last few times, like I talked about, he rolled to his left to that kind of more maybe dominant side of the line for Phoenix College, and he just got absolutely flattened. And Scottsdale, again, you called it right, Ben, but don't break. They caused the uh, fumble. But now can their offense maybe give a sustained drive and keep his defense off the field for a little bit longer? So this is only Scottsdale's second possession of the game. 5.41 left to go here. First quarter action. Bringing out that big offensive front line. Led by Jacob Brown, six foot 307, right there in the middle. Bunch. And the handoff and the Bears defense all over that one. Phenomenal defensive play. The tandem of Jones and 47, Kajana Lee. Yeah, Alundis Jones gets there. Lee helped out, but man, Jones. Nice form tackle by the corner, not the biggest of kids, as uh, you can see right there, Jeff, but a heck of a form tackle went in. Again, they they strung out the line, they extended the boundary there and doing a great job, and that's a one-yard loss on the play. So it's second and 11, and again they try to run it up the middle, and again the Phoenix College Bears rise to the occasion. Jerron Green, a 270-pounder, he was a he's a former Dobson Mustang out of Mesa, Arizona, with 4.50 left to go here in the first. Yeah, Dobson off to a solid start. It's been a while since they've, you know, had some winning ways there, but his, uh, his yep. alma mater doing pretty good so far this season. They are. They're off to a good start. We'll have to talk about the big juggle in <laughs> high school football yes. here. Bunch on play action, and he goes to the right side and throws, and trying to make the sliding catch over along the far side for the Scottsdale Fighting Artichokes was... Salvatore Canella, who did not start the game, but we featured in our pregame, the 6'5", 222-pound tight end. So back-to-back -back three and outs for the Scottsdale Fighting Artichoke offense. Again, if you're Coach Cazetto, you're happy with how your team's played. You're unhappy with the good drives and then a big hit your quarterback takes, a fumble. But force and three and outs for Scottsdale. If you're Coach Mandowski, you're like, man, come on, keep my defense off the field a little bit. Absolutely, they're going to have to. A booming kick. Boy, what a great catch. All the way back at the 35-yard line. Sheehy, a very dangerous, and what a great play on defense by Mohital. Javen Mohital, young man out of Hawaii. Yeah, that was a heck of a play, and Sheehy ran about 25 yards to gain five there, Jeff, as he had a circle back. And when he caught the ball, runs all the way around, tries to come back to the near side. But like you said, Moetal with a great tackle right there. But again, solid starting field position. This is three straight possessions. Their first three possessions, they've had great field position, have the Bears. So a 45-yard punt, six-yard return. And Scottsdale just continues to struggle offensively as the quarterback, who was injured on his last offensive play, forges ahead, and he's very, very close to a first down. Yeah, they're going to give it to him, Jeff. The linesman on the far side signaling it's a first down. But, well, yeah, I mean, he took that hit. He, he went off the play, and I guess maybe he wanted to uh, maybe let the defense know that they can't hurt him too hard because it's a designed quarterback run right up the middle there. Great job again by the line get, creating that hole. So first down and 10, they are in plus territory for the third consecutive time and for all three possessions so far. Fake the fly sweep, one-on-one -on -one coverage near side. Outstanding catch in the one-on-one, -on -one, and that's Burge. And he will drag the corner into the end zone for 49-yard touchdown. How impressive was that? Jeff, that was 
beyond phenomenal for Jerron Birch. The coverage wasn't bad, but I talked about Eckley. His non-throwing shoulder looked like it was hurt on that play. And look at the replay. He delivers it, and that is what we like to call a dime, Jeff. He put it right on Birch's hands. And for Scottsdale, as Kevin Anderson there in coverage, trying to strip the ball but not wrapping up. I know Birch is a little bit bigger, but Anderson's got to take him out of bounds, take him down something, and he drags him into the end zone. A heck of a play there by Birch, but all because of the beautiful touch pass there by Josh Eckley. Well, give some credit to Phoenix College up front. Spencer Lewis and Cameron Lewis on the left side, the right side, Osweiler and Reyes at right tackle, and then you got Daniel Cruz at center. Oh, that's... I highlighted them, but see, great minds think alike, Jeff. Dylan Brown, former Hamilton Husky. He was a three-year starter for Steve Bellis, and his extra point is good. And that should get him get him to forget that field goal as he, uh, again, from 42. Looks like he chunked it, but that was a nice extra point there. And But again, well, solid drive for PC, and they're up 7-0. With 3.36 left to go, the Bears lead the Artichokes 7-0. Staring contest! You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. We're back at Phoenix College. 7-0 lead after a 49-yard pass play from the Phoenix College Bears quarterback, Josh Eckley, hooking up with Birch, who made the catch roughly 10, 15 yards downfield and then got a lot of yards after the catch. There was a penalty against Phoenix College after the extra point, and so Dylan Brown has to kick from deep inside his own territory, and now the return for Scottsdale. This is David McGriff, and he is all the way up to the 44, but a penalty marker back at the 28. Yeah, and again, Scottsdale had a chance to have great uh, field position that, and actually they're going to be pushed back and that was a line drive kick but well not just one player two players but it's still only 10 yards so they were both holding the same player so whoever was trying to make the tackle Scottsdale really did not want to get downfield there but that being said had a chance at great field position and again you know we've heard throughout the years from so many coaches I mean Phoenix College now like we said four and one Scott's a 0 and three but it's the little plays like that that makes such a difference in a game because you would have had great field position. Yeah, they just scored, but now again, you're pinned back and Phoenix College can, you know, take a few more chances like they've done, put a little bit more pressure if they want to on, on Scottsdale's offense. Andrew Bunch on first down and 10, hit as he throws, one-on-one -on -one coverage on the far seam, and it's got, what a catch, what a throw. And Alex Jackson Jr. Hauling it in for the Fighting Artichokes, the 5'8 freshman out of Liberty, Arizona High School. Yeah, Liberty, the uh, northwest side of the valley, right down the street actually from uh, Sunrise Mountain High School. And now from the 46, around the left edge, the former Chandler Wolf, Micah Campos, and he is inside the red zone of the Phoenix College Bears. So maybe these two defenses starting to open up a little bit. Well, big first town there. Again, you get a big pass, like you said, by Bunch to Jackson Jr. And then Campos goes around uh, goes around the corner, pardon me, like you were saying. And, uh, man, it's got so offense. Well, whatever coaches are saying to them on the sidelines is working, Jeff. Amari Keys at running back, but they're going to go for the end zone, and we're going to definitely get a flag here. There was a lot of contact, and it was primarily the contact from the corner Isaiah Butler and this will put him in a half the distance to the goal yeah I don't know if it, well let's look at the replay here Jeff nice throw by Bunch and I don't think he had it would have been close if he actually just dove I mean he's right there and you saw you saw him rip the jersey right there but if he just would have if he would have dove I think he just could have knocked the ball down he was in great it was great coverage great great position by him so they would go back to Alan, uh, Alex Jackson Jr. on the far side. And after the pass interference penalty, it will not be half the distance, excuse me. I'm, I'm 
been doing a lot of high school games <laughs> yeah <laughs> so from the right around the five yard line so this has been a nice sustained drive six play of the drive coming up keys on an angle run to the two yard line where he's going to be stood up and the ball does come loose but i think they're going to blow this one dead first in there uh, is trevon johnson a six foot 210 pounder out of west palm beach florida Well, as he comes around the left side there again, ooh, his knee almost goes down, but that's, <laughs> these running backs year after year, Jeff, just surprised me as the ball comes out, but he's definitely down. But just the fact he was able to keep his balance and not put his knee down after maybe a two-yard gain, picks up a few more, and Scottsdale will, uh, you know, Scottsdale will keep uh, possession and, again, see if they can tie this game up after it's been the first quarter just dominated by Phoenix College. I'm not sure what the discussion is. Let's get the call from the official here. It's still first and goal from the five. Personal foul mm -hmm. on the defense number 55. Participating after losing his helmet. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Yeah, that's a rule in college football. I think this is the third year of it now, Jeff. And again, I you don't, and it's in high school as well, too. You don't want to. <laughs> You're told to stop playing, but I mean, your whole life, I mean, you're going after somebody. And Finish the play. For people to say, yeah. you know, oh, they know they should just know to stop. I mean, it's, it's just habit. You don't mean for your helmet to fall off, but again, it's a, you know, a, tough, a tough penalty to take, but again, it's uh, you're hustling, so I know a coach isn't going to be too upset about that. So they come to the line of scrimmage, led by the center, Jacob Brown. It is first and goal from the two and a half yard line in bunch. Could have easily, he easily walked that one in for the touchdown to cut the lead to one from two and a half yards out. And it is now seven to six in favor of the Phoenix College Bears. But Scottsdale, there is, is there a flag down on the field? No, there's not. Yes, yes there was. I thought so. So touchdown will count, and it's we yeah. got an extra point coming up. Yeah, I was going to say, no, it was a free play for Scottsdale anyway, Jeff, on the offside. But yeah, Bunch made no uh, bones about that. He took the snap, didn't even look to uh, fake the handoff, look for a receiver. He just took off. It was his quarterback uh, 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 sprint out to the left side, and he, you said, like you said, pretty much untouched into the end zone from two yards out. Eric Lopez, as we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, has been perfect. 11 point after touchdown attempts, and he's 11 for 11, and the kick is blocked, and it must have jinxed him. Now you can return this for a two-point conversion, and it's picked up by Shrimp, and Shrimp is still on his feet and finally tripped up from behind near the 45-yard line, but it was fun and exciting for the home team nonetheless. Well, it absolutely was, uh, Jeff, and when you look at, when you look at Shrimp, was that? No, that was number 58, wasn't it? It was Leal. Oh, was it? Okay. Number 58. Yeah, Frankie Leal listed at, oh, man, 6'2", 220. I don't know. That might be on the light side, Jeff. He looks a little bit bigger at 220, and you had some uh, some other guys out in front of him, uh, preferably uh, specifically number 24, Jarrell Green, the defensive back who was next to him, saying, give me the ball. <laughs> but he thought he could get in, like you said. He can block it and return it for a two-point conversion. But, again, for Scottsdale, it's, again, 0-3. It's that, you know, two – Two steps forward, one step back, because mm -hmm. they get the touchdown, but you can't get the extra point to tie it up. Well, what a job by this Scottsdale offensive front line. Bronson Sanchez, Austin Ross, Jacob Brown, the center, Masters and Preston, and they really gave Bunch a lot of time to throw the ball. I mean, he, was, he seemed very comfortable. The first two possessions of the contest were both three and outs, and very quick three and outs, and he seemed hurried. But on that drive, which started all the way back at the 30-yard line, 10 plays, 70 yards, culminating in a very easy two-and-a-half-yard run by Bunch, the quarterback, Andrew Bunch out of Tennessee, 6'187 pounds. Yeah, and it was, again, like you said, it, the line did a little bit better there. He got rid of the ball quicker, receivers getting open. They mixed in the run. Sheehy from the two, and then he's going to be wrestled down near the 19-yard line. And pretty good special teams coverage. Kylan Cotton, young man out of Spanish Fork, Alabama, on the special teams tackle for Scottsdale in the wall-white uniforms. Well, Damon had that big 95-yard kick return for touchdown when these two teams met 
two weeks ago when Phoenix College won 38-31. Phoenix coming in with a record of 4-1 as Scottsdale looks for their first win of the season. Handoff and Smith, nope, it was the keeper by the quarterback and around the right edge he goes. And Eckley is going to be brought down defensively on the play and it looks like number three and Craig Barnes, the 218 pound Chicago native. Yeah, and actually, again, like we talked about, Jeff banged up on that one hit. Looks like he was a little shook up, but yeah, I mean, maybe that just fired him up as he came out and uh, ran the ball and is taking a few hits and looks good. Takes on a couple of defenders, gets the three yards required on second down for a first down, and he's got it. Ball carrier was Myers that time. They've got a plethora of running backs that they can go to here at Phoenix College. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, and you start out with... Uh, with Zach Smith and then Myers there and that offensive line. And Myers slips a tackle in the backfield and then cannot elude our number 16, who is Gary McKay, I believe. Even though he's listed as a wide receiver and at 144 pounds, he looks a little bigger than 144. Yeah, I want to say that that's a number change because that is not a 144 pound no, I don't gentleman think that's there. Gary McKay. We'll try to get that before uh, second quarter starts. Second down and nine after a gain of one. Actually, a gain of two from the 28. 7 6, Phoenix College with the ball and the possession and the first reception of the night for Low Williams. Sean Low Williams, a six foot competitor out of Desert Heights, Arizona. And they will move the chains up to the 42 and another first down, 14 yards. And look at this, Coach Flugrad and the offensive coordinator, Jeff, picks up the first down again, keeping the, keeping the up-tempo offense going. And the right side, nothing doing there. And good job by the Scottsdale defense, one of their top defensive plays here tonight. Zach Olegi leading the charge out of Skyline. Arizona, who played Hamilton tough last night. We got a penalty marker way back where the safeties dwell in pre-snap. There is no foul for illegal substitution. The player was off the field. So disregard the flag with 35.4 seconds left to play here opening quarter. 7-6, Phoenix with the lead. So the ball resting at the 42-yard line, second down and 10. I'll tell you what, so far, Josh Eckley has been very impressive. Both throwing the ball, composure, stretching out the play with his legs like he does here, being chased from behind, out of the pocket, he throws it incomplete. Well, it did, oh, you know what? He was out of the pocket, and it did go past the line of scrimmage, Jeff, because he was getting close to the line of scrimmage. But uh, I thought it may have been grounding, but it's the, the ball did pass the line of scrimmage and skip to the ground. but. Again, Scottsdale doing a good job from his backside getting pressure. Jeff, every time they've gotten pressure and he's been flushed to where he hasn't gained, he's had to come to the Phoenix College side of the field, the near side of the field. So, and if they can keep getting pressure on that backside, it might be good, but they're going to leave their secondary hanging out to dry, I think. 13 seconds on the clock, first quarter action with plenty of time, and now rushing the quarterback. He throws under pressure and completes it to the far side. Another fine catch by Sean Williams along that far side as Owens was on the coverage for the Artichokes. Yeah, I like the patience there again. You described it perfectly, Jeff, for Eckley. Very patient. If he has to roll out, he'll roll out, but he's staying in the pocket. Very disciplined. Is, sorry, the official. It's just a penalty to the sideline warning. Just a well, it's, they throw the flag, but it's just a warning, no yards or no losses there as they pick up the first down. But man, you're right, his poise in the pocket has been phenomenal for Phoenix College's Eccles. And it was a 13-yard pass play as they go back to the air, and he flings this one out of play. And good pressure on the quarterback by Joel Rufino, a two-year starter for Doug Madoski's defense. Well, Joel and Rufino, yeah, that, making a play there. And that is the end of quarter number one. It's been a good one. Phoenix with a one-point lead.
I rescued Toes from a shelter in 2011. I love Toes because she's a lazy diva. Toes makes me laugh. <laughs> when I walked into the shelter, I knew she was special. Welcome back to Phoenix College, a 7-6 lead for the team hosting tonight's contest, the Phoenix College Bears, and it's second down and 10, and the quarterback again under heavy duress and has to unload incomplete as Londell Sanders, a linebacker, rushed in out of Michigan. Well, he got again rushed again, but again from the backside as he was rolling to his right, and again just got rid of that ball in time. Oh, are they going to call intentional grounding? Well, Coach Medowski on the far side, Jeff, is lobbying for it, saying his receiver was about 12 yards downfield, and he's trying to say the ball didn't cross the line of scrimmage. It's tough to see. It's pretty, uh, pretty close, but the officials are talking. A lot of times they won't. Sometimes the referee, I shouldn't say a lot, sometimes he doesn't throw the flag, and they'll, and they'll talk about it, and then the flag will drop, and they'll call intentional grounding. So we'll try and see if the receiver was in the area. Yep, and they dropped the flag. And Jeffrey Bell, our lead official here today. Well, the last two drives by Phoenix College have been double digits in terms of plays. They had a 17 play drive their first time. One of the most costly penalties in all of football, maybe the most costly penalty is that intentional grounding because you yeah. lose the down and right. you get I mean, set back 10 yards. Personal fouls are bad because you lose the 15 yards, but at the same time, like you said, not the loss of down, right. so absolutely. Although well, the offense always gets all the, uh, the rule changes in favor of them, so the defense got to keep that one in all of football. I guess that's good for the defense, right, Jeff? So now it is third down and 22, working from the 43-yard line. Out of the shotgun, back to pass. Eckley in trouble and throwing, and it looks like it's incomplete, and it is. So the pressure applied to the quarterback getting into that backfield has been monumental, and Scottsdale starting to turn this game around a little bit as they trail 7-6 to six with 14-47 left to go here in the first half. Yeah, again, they're, I don't understand that when they've run to – that left side, that offensive line, run blocking wise. I mean, we both touched on it in the first quarter, Jeff. They're pushing the Scottsdale defensive line around, but for some reason, pass blocking, somebody's constantly getting through and forcing Eckley to roll to uh, his left and just not giving him a, a lot, not giving the receivers a lot of time to get into their patterns. So Eric Lopez is doing the punting here. Normally it's Kevin Macias, but this is Lopez. Penalty marker as the ball is snapped to him. So it looks like an offsides penalty going against the return team. Let's get the call. It's going to be a delay a game. So that'll move them back five more yards. And now looking at a fourth and what, 20, fourth and 27. They move it all the way back to the 37 yard line. Well, that was a, it was a, wasn't all that of a impressive drive, but yeah, eight up 12 plays. Yeah, and yeah, 12 plays, only 13 seconds off the clock though. Ooh, punts almost blocked up the middle there, Jeff. And it's a muff punt, and it's going to be picked up by Phoenix College, and that's not good. But there is a flag down on the play. It might be coming back. Yeah, Jeff, that's going to be on against Phoenix College because I know that that two-yard bubble is uh, always very loosely interpreted at all levels, and I know it frustrates people when they see that guys running by, kick returners, but he literally was standing at his – he didn't touch him, but he's standing right there like – Half, like a half a foot away, not even two yards. So that is gonna, that should be interference right there. And Scottsdale will retain the ball. So 14:37 left to go here in the first half. Phoenix College got a touchdown back in the first, a 49-yard pass play, Eckley to Birch. The extra point by Dylan Brown was good, and then with 2.27 left to go in the first. On the kicking team, number 52, 15-yard penalty from the foul, first down. 
Wow, that's that, costly. Wow, that is a 15 yard pick. And for our viewers just watching for the first time, if they've watched other college football, Division One, Division Two down, they, they changed the rules. Um, the NCAA did, so obviously they fall down with the NJCAA. But if you get a second personal foul after the like after play is dead, then you will be ejected from the game. Well, so. well Phoenix College had a player back in week one, Fidel Daniels get ejected from the game. And if Oh, and they can't play in the game the next week. As we see there on the replay, Jeff, he was so close to him, and he muffed uh, the punt, and all the Phoenix College players are pointing, and she, he's like, what do I have to do to get a call? So first down and 10. They start from their own 31-yard line, and this is Alex Jackson, Jr., and he's got the first down to the 46-yard line, a 15-yard pickup. Well, Jeff, I talked about it in pregame. Obviously, losing Tommy Ziegler, tough for Scottsdale. But again, you can see kind of his imprint on this, uh, still on this offense, because those quick bubble screens to receivers to kind of get the defensive line to start maybe thinking a little bit is uh, was a signature of his. Looked like there might have been a premature movement there on that offensive line, but the catch is made after the pass. And a nice job by Salvatore Canella we talked about at the top of the broadcast and now quickly coming back on a second down and two slips the tackle is jackson jackson to the 40 he'll be stood up and brought down near the 38 yard line but not before he picks up seven yards and an artichoke first down well jeff i mean jackson's very talented but my, my cheesy comment of the night i mean look at the shoes and the gloves you got the neon green you're going to be that loud you better be able to make plays and, and he's doing it but he's doing it for him he's shaking tacklers and Eluding tacklers, I should say, and making plays. A bobbled snap by Bunch. PC gets pressure, and he eludes them around the right edge. Still on his feet, and he's all the way down to the Bears' nine-yard line. Well, that was a touchdown-saving tackle there, Jeff, by uh, Rahimi Roundtree. Um, and he's a little frustrated because as you saw Bunch carrying the ball, if anybody could have just got inside or stripped it or punched it out, that ball would have went flying, not really protecting it well on that run. But he picks up a first down. And 29 yards, they mark it at the 10, so it's goal to go from the 10-yard line. And Scottsdale with an opportunity to take their first lead of the contest. Campos over the left side and literally unabated to the end zone. Touchdown for the visiting Fighting Artichokes, 10 yards out by Campos out of Chandler High School. Well, that was beautiful again on the run when he, uh, when, pardon me, Bunch, as in he, when he uh, scored his touchdown, he went to the same side of the field, Jeff, the left side, untouched, and that time, <laughs> Campos, again, they're wearing all white uniforms. Campos is going to have any grass stains from that play. So Scottsdale now leads at 12 to 7 with 13 13 left to go here in the second quarter. Snap is down, kick is up, and he missed it. It hit the right upright. No good out of the hold of Kevin Macias. And there is a penalty. There is another penalty. Yeah, Jeff, not only is there one, there's four penalty markers down. One hit uh, one of the Phoenix College players in the shoulder pad, and he was just standing there, so I don't think he was the one getting penalized, but four penalty markers down on that extra point attempt there. So... So a 10-yard run by Reed Campos. The extra point attempt was no good, but we've got to sort out the four flags that are down on the field with 13 minutes and 13 seconds left to go here in the second quarter. I'll tell you what, we're not even two minutes into this second quarter, and it's <laughs> taken about 20 minutes. <laughs> well, the official's a little bit busy there. I hope you I was don't about have to a, say flight. To you a yeah, uh, flight to catch. You have right? a flight to catch? No, no, no red-eye flight tonight. Well, the uh, back judge coming over talking to Coach Gazzetto and explaining uh, what's going on. So I guess maybe. Try was no good after the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct. 
on the defense, number 55. Also after the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. On the offense, number 65. Those penalties offset. So they have to call. They have to call it because they are personal fouls. Like I said, and each guy now has each player has one personal foul. And again, I look at that, and I like what Coach Gazzetto's doing right here because he talked to us on the sidelines before the game, Jeff, about discipline and about you know guys wanting to be here, making plays, and playing the right way. And he's gathering them up because I think he's fed up with the personal foul calls. So Scottsdale leads 12 to seven. Second quarter action. This is MCTV Sports. We offered one of the first automotive technology degrees in the Southwest. To date, we've seen thousands of graduates enter their dream field, the automotive industry. Yeah, I guess you can call us dream builders. Let us help you build yours. Because as you can see, we've got more dreamers on the way. Way to go, Mia. Kevin Macias teeing things up here for Scottsdale. They have their first lead of the contest as they lead it 12 to seven. Kick is away. They have not avoided Sheehy, nor will they hear in this one from the four yard line. Race it up to the 25, the 30, the 35. Close to the 35 yard line and a return. Well, close to the 31, excuse me. And Jeff, what I, love, what I love about Sheehy is that, again, he, he on the far side of the field, again, angled a little bit to his left, but once he saw Hull just go straight up field, going north and south, and you always hear special teams coaches talking about that, more so on punt, but your first three steps should always, always, always be forward, and man, he accelerates, and you can see why he has those two returns for touchdowns. No question about it. So they go with a counter run here, get it around the right edge. And all the way up to the 39, a gain of well, almost seven yards on the play. And Jeff, real quick, special teams again, always a factor in these games that we cover because that's two extra points, one blocked and now one missed by Scottsdale. So a chance to literally be up by a touchdown, they're only up by five. So Myers, who got the call in the last one, will get it here, slips through with the lead blocking. As a late flag and, comes well, in. Two of them come flying in, Jeff, and that's because it was a late hit on Scottsdale. And I think he jumped on. They felt a little bit late. Did he hear a whistle? Again, sometimes it's been my gripe, as you know, about. Play. Personal foul. Late hit on the defense number 56. 15 yards. And, and I understand it is player protection, so I'm not picking on the referees in this instance, saying that, oh, they don't need to call that. But at the same time, if he didn't hear a whistle or if he was in the in the uh, in the motion of making the tackle, it's just hard to stop. Again, I know it's kind of one of those bang bang plays, but if he, he did hear the whistle, then he's got to he's got to pull up because that did look like a, it did look like a painful hit there. Myers around the right edge, and Myers wrapped up by Clayton, 308 pounds. <laughs> After he barrels his way down to the 35, gain of five, second down coming up, actually a gain of four, and then they moved it back to the 36. So second and six coming up here, 12 minutes on the clock. We're in the second quarter. Scottsdale has scored the last two times and lead it 12 to seven, and we're gonna get a stop here and play. And is this a false start against the offense? No, I think it's going to go against the defense. But the reason why they didn't give him the free play because I think he had made contact and he was passing and he would have been unevaded to the quarterback. Yeah, that that was uh, Joel Rafino who we mentioned earlier, Jeff. I think he would have been unevaded, and so the official didn't want to take the chance. And so even though it was a free play, he was uh, he was around the edge very very quickly. Well, right now they, uh, I, th I think Jeffrey Ball, it was a second and six. It was a five yard penalty. So now it's second and one. So now they're moving the chains back and that's what was the stop in play. 11.55 left to go here in quarter number two. Watching MCTV Sports and our coverage of National Junior College football as the Phoenix College Bears trailing visiting Scottsdale 12 to seven. I so left and not much there at the 25 and that's a first down not 
Not much defense on that front wall, and now Phoenix College go into a hurry up after the six-yard pickup. And they run almost the same play. No, they give it right back to the quarterback, and he gets the edge to the right side, and he's out of bounds, and that's a first down. Down inside to the, looks like the 14. <clears throat> well, you got a whistle there, but I love this uh, hurry up by Phoenix. Again, they had the tempo in the first quarter helping. And the perfect quarterback for it, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So first down and 10 from the 15. Myers wrapped up defensively by Owens. Looked like number six, Zach Olegway. We're down to the 11-15 mark here in quarter number two. Phoenix has had two drives where they have had 17 plays and 12 plays. And even though they own the time of possession, they trail by five. Olegi, or rather uh, the quarterback, Eckley, throwing incomplete. Crowd wanted a pass interference call. So does Eckley, and he's not going to get it. It's third down and eight. Well, Brendan Fisher, I think, has every right to complain, Jeff. And you know me. Normally, I, it drives me crazy when I see receivers asking for the pass interference call. But he was draped by Lumley, and the ball hadn't got there yet. And Lumley was right there. So again, that time, I might tend to agree with, uh, with Fisher on that. And we'll see if they can convert this big third down, Jeff. 12 to 7 Scottsdale. Big play here for Phoenix College. They looked impressive and moving the ball early. Here is a double reverse and the throw coming from the receiver. It's caught touchdown into the end zone. And Phoenix College with Brandon Fisher getting the pass from Matthew Mitchell. Mitchell played for Joy Christian, a very successful lower division level school here in Arizona. Well, and it's 13-12. Sorry, Jeff, I'm just kind of laughing because he didn't get the pass interference call, but then they go the ultimate trick play and he gets the touchdown catch right there. A heck of a catch though by Mitchell. Like you said, that Joy Christian team, man, they've, uh, they've done very well uh, down in the lower divisions. Dylan Brown's extra point is good and Phoenix College has regained the lead. We've had two lead changes with 10.44 left to go here in the first half. The Bears lead the Fighting Artichokes by two. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're going to take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. We're back at Phoenix College, and they're going to take it out. Here's Scottsdale. Flag is down and still on his feet is Trayvon Clayton, and he finally is going to be corralled just shy of his own 20-yard line. Good coverage there by Phoenix College, led by 49, Brian Lynch, but let's see what the flag is all about. Yeah, Jeff, again, a penalty marker down, and uh, <laughs> the first quarter went, didn't go by, it went by pretty quick, and a few penalties here and there, but the second quarter's gotten a little bit more chippy between these two teams. tough to uh, lose those yards. Uh, Jeff, again, Scott still had it earlier, but then they ended up scoring on that drive, their first scoring drive. So they uh, maybe they like uh, being backed up a little bit more, but this gives, like again, like I said before earlier, Phoenix College a chance, and the defensive line's done a good job, but maybe to put some pressure on here, see if they can't cause a turnover and uh, give the offense 
the ball with a very short field to work with. First down and 10, working from their own nine. Bunch on play action, throwing left into the flats where it is caught and good for first down yardage. It was Daniels who had missed his last game because of a suspension. He was thrown out of a ball game, but a 15 yard pass play. George Walter, the uh, 6'1", 168 pounder out of Seton Catholic made the catch. Yeah, Walter again was a benefit. They were showing corner blitz was uh, Phoenix College, and it looked like the line, the outside linebacker just stepped in a little too much. So Walter, as you saw, Jeff had all that real estate to work with. So a blown coverage there by the Bears. 16-yard pickup, first down and 10 for Scottsdale. Andrew Bunch, a Tennessee native, now throwing right and one-on-one -on -one coverage incomplete. Outstanding coverage, Michael, by Gerald Green, who leads the conference in interceptions with four coming into tonight's game. Yeah, he does, and uh, I, tops in the league, and he is he's drawing a tough assignment with Canella. I mean, I know you talked about him earlier. Obviously, he has interest from ASU, and when you see that, obviously how big and long and athletic he is. I mean, 6'5", 222, and good speed for Canella. And Gerald Green just 5'9", so you would think that would be a mismatch, but so many times over there, it's it's really all about technique and, and quickness. That was a quick pass that Bunch just delivered there to the outside. Looks like to uh, I say could have been Muhammad. Well, it's going to bring up a third down and seven. Actually, Allen Jackson Jr. I'm sorry, Jeff. Alex Jackson Jr. Third down and seven, Bunch steps up into the pocket and throws, and it's off the hands of the aforementioned Alex Jackson, Jr., and it's incomplete, and the punting unit is out for Scottsdale, who started the game with two three and outs, kind of sputtering a little bit, but then that offensive line came together and provided great protection. They took a 12-7 lead, only to see Phoenix College come back with a Nice sustained drive to take the 14-12 lead after a razzle-dazzle play on a double reverse. Mitchell to Fisher for 13 yards with 10.44 left to go here in the second quarter. Yeah, and we saw on the replay there that Bunch just drilled that ball towards Jackson Jr. as he was getting flushed. And again, lucky that wasn't an interception because Jackson Jr. tipped it. And uh, it went behind him, but nobody was there. Sheehy, after a 40-yard punt, still on his feet. So elusive, flags all over the place. And this could be a face-masking penalty. And Alex Jackson Jr. getting up slow for SEC there, Jeff, as he walks off the field. 25-yard return for Sheehy. But let's uh, sort out what the officials saw on the field just a moment ago. Well, going into halftime, Jeff, uh, all, all cheesiness aside, they might have to wash the, those penalty markers because they are going to be stained being on the grass as much as they have in the second quarter, which again. You know, when Coach Gazzetto called Phoenix College for when we took that timeout real quick after the score, again, I like that. Not happy with the personal foul saying, guys, I understand. And we were talking to him on the sidelines. I mean, that's one thing anyone that's ever uh, played on his teams knows the kind of offensive lineman. He, he says they're going to be fine off the field, but the, he wants that mean streak and that nastiness on the field. But it's got to be to a controlled point, which I know sounds contradictory, but again, he brought them together, and you can't have these mistakes against a hungry Scottsdale team. Counter play. Zach Smith left side, he's got the line to gain across the midway stripe and inside Scottsdale territory for the first down, 12 yards on the play. And Jeff, where did they go again? To the left side for Zach Smith. And again, I know I talked about it, but Spencer Lewis, I mean, this kid, absolutely huge for the uh, for the Bears. Had, a, had an injury out of uh, high school, but again, able to uh, well, broken play here, and that's going to be a quarterback sack for the Scottsdale Fighting Artichokes, Maurice Fairfield. Yeah, Spencer Lewis, 6'5", 275, just out of, out of not Mountain Point, Red Mountain, pardon me. But uh, unfortunately had an injury late, and Coach Gazzetto said, hey, he's going to be probably yep. one and done and move on. And, I mean, we see how dominant the left side of the line's been. <laughs> yes. They've had two scores from, from the result of their outstanding blocking. 
So second down, they lose three, second and 13, back at their own 49. Eckley in trouble. He's going to be gobbled up, and that's a quarterback sack all the way back at the 41-yard line, a loss of eight on the play. You know, Jeff, I love Eckley's patience like you talked about there, but that time I think it was to his demise due to the fact that that clock's got to be going off in his head. Good pass protection there from his offensive line, Jeff, but at the same time, once you get to about, I mean, he got to three, but once you get to five and you're still up, he's got the feet. He's got to take off and make a play. So now looking at a third and 21. They need to get to the Scottsdale 38-yard line to pick up this first down. Seven and a half on the clock with time. Ackley, he's going to take off with it to the 45, slips a tackle there. He's going to pick up the first down and a whole lot more. How about that? Well, Jeff, I said it, but look how much time he had to throw. Again, when you have that much time, you have that much confidence in your offensive line, it's hard to take off, but the receivers, again, pushed the, the safety, the linebackers and safeties, as we see here on the replay, downfield. He pump fake, didn't like what he saw, and look at that, his line doing a great job, and... Exactly, just stiff arm, light stiff arm there, picks up the first down and gets tackled. That's almost, that's a touchdown saving tackle there by the artichokes. What about Osweiler out there trying to lead block for him? Smith needs a lead block, is not going to find it, but he picks up close to six yards on the play. Yeah, Kylan Cotton on the previous play, he made that tackle, Jeff, and that was touchdown saving, but again, just a decision from Josh Ackley. We see how athletic he is, and a lot of quarterbacks are impatient. They don't want to wait long enough. I guess if you're think, you're, you're, uh, your problem is you're waiting too long, coaches are might be a little frustrated, but he's trying to let his receivers run open. Seventh play of the drive, second down and six. Eckley rolling out and throwing on the run, and it's going to be caught. Fine catch, and now they're going to say it's incomplete. Yeah, the headlinesman was at a perfect angle because the umpire was, he was shielded a little bit, but the headlinesman came over. It was a heck of an effort, though. Desmond Daniels. By Daniels, yeah. So a big third down, six play. We're in a 14-12 ball game with Phoenix College. We've had two ties, or two lead changes, I should say. And to me, Jeff, it's even bigger for Phoenix College. I mean, to send more of a statement to get, I mean, a field goal will be fine, but get a score on this drive. The throw, the catch, the first down. Phoenix College Bears late flag coming in all the way into the backfield. That one came after about an 11-yard pickup on the play. Yeah, that was a heck of a toss, again, by Eckley and Israel Simpson. Yeah, made that catch Simpson out of uh, Chaparral. I want to say he was started at Hamilton, if memory serves me correct, uh, when he was a freshman. Oh, man, I is could, Simpson? I could be wrong. I, I'm not saying he wasn't, but I, I could have. I thought he was a three-year varsity like player starter at Chaparral. Yeah. Nonetheless, six and a half on the clock. And another bad penalty by Scottsdale to help prolong this drive for the Bears. And the quarterback, this is Eckley, and he is going to be upended. And quickly getting in there on the defensive end is Anthony Ramirez, one of the leading tacklers here tonight. Another Centennial Coyote playing for the Artichokes. Yeah, heck of a job there by Ramirez to blow it up. And you saw Eckley try to jump over him, but Ramirez was having none of that. Pick up a four, second down, and a short, a long five, short six. And they'll just keep this one right up the middle, running A-gap right. And that was Myers on the carry. Yeah, Jeff, again, I really love the pace to the game and the call. Um, coach Flugrad, uh, Coach Gazzetto's assistant head coach and offensive coordinator is is having with this game as they try to go up the middle again but just get shut down but again i just love the pace and how he's mixing it up because scott's still really defensively hasn't played bad but they, they're not able to get into a rhythm jarrell green on the tackle the young freshman out of millennium high school in the west end of of course now that says lauren 
Johnston. 5-11 in a two-point lead here for the Phoenix College Bears, and they're going to call a timeout. Remember, they got Dylan Brown, a pretty reliable field goal kicker, as we will take it to break as Phoenix College leads it 14-12 with 5.05 left to go in the first half. My name's William Parker, and I'm six years old, and I want to be a fireman. Veterinarian. Veterinarian. All right, Dylan Brown is in. He will attempt a 22 yard field goal out of the hold of Marshall Prater. He missed one from 43 yards out, but this was like an extra point, and it is good. So 5.05 left to go, and that makes it 17 to 12. Well, a short field goal there, and Coach Gazzetto again the time. The uh, play clock, Jeff, that's why he took the time out before it went to break. They broke the huddle, and it went to nine, not saying they couldn't have got the snap off, but probably didn't want Eckley to feel rushed on a fourth down. You know what he said? They called the timeout. They talked. Hey, our defense has been playing good. Scottsdale's moved the ball, but you know what? We're going to take the three points. Now they go back up by five. But again, I, I think he's got to feel a teeny bit, a few, uh, a few missed opportunities and points left on the field there. So a five-point lead here for the home team, Phoenix College. Obviously, since this is a non-conference game, I mean, I guess this game, I, like I said, I think it's almost a must-win for Scottsdale. They To go 0-4 and, and then try to take on some of the bigs that they're going to be facing here in the upcoming schedule. Same for Phoenix College. I mean, right. I just think this is a... Still a very important game, not for playoff implications, as this will be a touchback. And Scottsdale will have it at their own 20-yard line. But both these teams are going to be facing Arizona Western. Eastern's tough this year. Snow was number one in the country before Mason knocked them off And then last now Arizona week. Western's number one in the and country. And Arizona Western's number one. And <laughs> I mean, that's a rough schedule. And then, you know, you've got... And nobody, I don't think anybody in this conference wants to play Mesa. I mean, after what they did going, not only did they win against Snow, but they went up to Utah. Uh, I mean, how many from, Maricopa yeah. teams have went up there in the last 10 years and claimed victory? Well, not a lot. Not, not our, too many. Our good old friend, uh, Coach Kirsting, told us about the nightmares of uh, and the uh, the uh, issues of playing up there and just, I mean, it is, it's a great environment. It's fun. It's tough. But mm -hmm. again, it is a great home field advantage as we see coach Cazetto there again, his second year, a lot of his assistants, you know, I love hearing this Jeff Sun Devil, Sun Devils, ex Sun Devil players that he recruited. And uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're turning around here at PC. George Walter with his second catch for nine yards on the play. Bring it up to the 20, uh, check that, the 34. And now Scottsdale will have a fresh set of downs on this play by Reed Campos, brought down by Gully, the 230-pounder out of North Little Rock, Arkansas. And that hurry-up offense back at it. Out of the shotgun, and this time Bunch gives the Campos again. Boy, what a what a menacing hit that time by Delvin Bellamy, a 275-pounder out of Skyline Prep. We mentioned earlier played Hamilton at Jerry Loper Stadium last night and gave them a pretty good ball game. That's a up-and-coming program, no doubt about it. As Campos straight ahead for about three and a half yards. And I'll tell you what, this Phoenix College team, the last two or three tackles, very very menacing. Absolutely, Jeff and Scott still again going with the no huddle for and I hurry up a, uh, the first few plays so Phoenix College couldn't sub and that's one thing about going up tempo is 
Yeah, you hope your offense can handle it. You don't let the D-line sub, although Phoenix College able to get one sub in there. But, yeah, I mean, they, they've had success with it, keeping, and they're getting the matchups they want, so they go hurry up and get the matchups they want, and Phoenix College has struggled with it a little bit. Down to five on the play clock. 3.46 left to go here in the half. Bunch in trouble, and he's going to be wrapped up for a quarterback sack. Yeah, Phoenix showed blitz. They missed the first time, Jeff, but then the, uh, his friends came and, uh, came and helped him out there. Yeah, Trayvon Johnson, who, uh, who's had a very solid season defensively for the Bears. But, yeah, they showed blitz. They made no bones what they wanted to do, and they were able to get there. And Trayvon Johnson, he's 11th in the conference in total tackles, Jeff, um, uh, with 24. And he has 20 solo tackles tied for fifth. So, again, a very just disciplined uh, fast-paced defense from Phoenix College this year, and well, Coach talked about Coach Gazzetto talked about changing the culture, and uh, you can you can tell just by their uh, their uh, posture on the field, their body language on the field. Beautiful, towering, spiraling kick, fielded back at the 10-yard line, and that punt goes nearly 50 yards. Well, he has had Macias. Macias has had two punts that. Uh, even when the one that Sheehy returned a little bit, there was a penalty where he had to run back to the 25, Jeff, to make that unbelievable catch and that play. And, I mean, his leg is, uh, he's got a Division One leg, so we'll see where uh, where this kid ends up. I'm not trying to jinx him, but those are two great punts. And when you can swing field position, as we know, yep. that's big for Scottsdale. But, again, they got to somehow try and figure out a way to consistently slow down this PC offense. Nice run to the left side, Zach Smith. It's tripped up by our infamous number 16. <laughs> I'm really having a hard time. I'm, I can't be convinced that that's Gary McKay, but Smith again, back-to-back -back carries, and he's going to be very close. He got the first down as they're going to mark him down at the Phoenix College Bears 26-yard line with 2.25 left to go and a 17-12 lead for the home team and the yellow tops and those gray pants. They used to look like Michigan when you come out here almost. Well, Michigan and Cal, I mean, or being Cal the Bears. But you're right, yeah. no, both, because they had that, the blue. But yeah, they went, they went back uh, maybe a little old school with the gray. I, I, like, I like the mix, Jeff, I like it. A little mix there. Let's, and it, it's ironic that a Big Ten guy like myself <laughs> would say Michigan and a, and a Pac-12 guy <laughs> would say Cal, well, I mean, like you. Absolutely. Hey, your team couldn't lose today. They had the week off. <laughs> That'll be nice. I am. They, they, they congrats to them. They actually won a, traveled out of state and won a game last week, so that's something different for them in September. 2.14 left on the clock. Second down and nine. If they're going to take a shot downfield. Throw comes on a quick curl route at the 35, and the catch was made by a Garrett, who's been very quiet, and it took a tackle by Pedro to the outstanding corner, the 169-pounder, to make the play, and two yards shy of a first down. Third down and two. Owning a five-point lead, the quarterback in trouble again, and down he goes, and that will be a quarterback sack for the Scottsdale Fighting Artichokes, and give credit to Pinsamana Talfa, 6'2", 195 pounder out of Hawaii, and we got a timeout on the field with 135 left to go and a fourth and two coming up with Phoenix College in possession of both the ball and the lead. You know, Jeff, I am looking at 16. McKay's also said a receiver, but I mean, he, he doesn't look that big. Number 16, the safety for the uh, the artichoke. So maybe, maybe he switched the uh, size of the ball. Maybe they figured he was uh, better off at safety, but uh, We'll, we'll, we'll see. But yeah, for Phoenix College right there, as we saw Eckley trying to stretch out and get that first down, loses a half yard. So, but they did run the ball. Scottsdale took a timeout figuring, hey, maybe we can, you know, we, we've hit some big plays downfield like you talked about, Jeff. The protection did get better as the first quarter went on into the second quarter. The uh, personal fouls kind of put a damper on it like we talked about, but uh, Coach Mendowski taking a timeout and they'll see what they can do. So Bryce Redmond, Redmond doing the punting. Line of scrimmage, the 39. And a 36-yard punt, and you can't ask for any better special teams coverage. 
I think that was Myers, who's a running back. Yeah. He's got six or seven carries in this game. Jeff took the words right out of my mouth because punt, again, it was a good punt, nice hang time. He had room, but Myers said, no, no, you don't, and took him right down there. You know, I'm looking at this SEC roster, too. You, you mentioned uh, Boston Sanders and uh, a few guys from Centennial, as uh, Carl Bars is here as well, but uh, David McGriff, one nephew of the crime dog, Fred, Fred McGriff, McGriff, Mr. Jeff. Screen it out near side on first down and 10 from their own 35 yard line. Late flag coming in as the pass was completed to Johnny Johnson Jr. And I don't think Johnny Johnson looks 149 pounds either, does he? Absolutely not. <laughs> well, you can negate what would have been a nice little gain there on that quick screen pass to Johnny Johnson. And with the holding penalty, it's going to move them back to the 25-yard line. So the hold occurred at the point of attack. As you can go look at Doug Madosky, who is actually in his 11th season with Scottsdale as their head coach, 16 overall. Yeah. <laughs> and at longevity at the junior college level, he was a defensive coordinator for the, uh, well, the, the longtime coach, uh, Ken Giovondo, Coach Gio. Uh, he was his defensive coordinator. and. He played a little uh, defensive line in his day too, Jeff. So his defensive line, I talked about Coach Cazetta with the nastiness on the offensive lines. His defensive lines play the same way. So the pass goes right back to Johnny Johnson. Nice catch out of Maricopa, Arizona. They actually moved the ball back up a little bit. It was actually first and 14, but he picks up close to 10 on that play. Second down and four, and the pass complete, and it's Johnson for a third consecutive time. He makes the catch at the Bears. 48-yard line and picks up the first down and a gain of close to 10. Yeah, Johnny Johnson. Oh, I don't know, Jeff. I give him about 155. But into the season now, maybe he's down to 140. Maybe they're actually being truthful about their weights these days. <laughs> <laughs> An adjusted weight as Campos gets upended on that far side. Boy, that was a sensational Open field tackle on the far side by Gerald Green, as we mentioned, leading the Western States Football League in interceptions this year after the four-yard pickup. And for DBs, usually once you start putting up numbers like that, especially halfway through the season, Jeff, they don't want to throw your way, but uh, uh, Bunch having no problem doing that. So second down and six, and Bunch with that gr very quick first step easily picks up the first down across the 35 in positive territory here with 24 seconds. Timeout, Scottsdale. Well, again, they got the ball and they took the timeout before the punt so they wouldn't lose 40 more seconds. And so far, Jeff, it, it's worked out uh, well for Coach. Again, Madowski you said 11, 11 years as head coach. And again, opportunities, you know, maybe to move on, but he's always been very uh, happy and competitive where he, well, I won't say happy with results because coaches always, you know, can find something not to be happy about, as you and I know. But that being said, I mean, just, you know, with being at Scottsdale on the junior college level and, you know, he played at the four-year level, very, very talented uh, defensive lineman. And, but, yeah, he's, uh, he's stuck around and uh, kind of did what Coach, you know, Coach Giovanna was here for a long time and Coach Mandowski just picked up the reins and ran with it. This team has been in the Valley of the Sun Bowl the last three seasons. And when they won it three years ago, it was probably the crowning achievement of Scottsdale football for many, many years. Yeah, it's been a while since, they, I mean, the last few times they were in the Sun Bowl before that, there was a, well, it wasn't really the Sun Bowl that year. It was rainy and muddy, and they lost <laughs> to Coffeyville out of Kansas. Um, and then, uh, but yeah, they were, They've been to three straight, like you said. and But, yeah, I mean, it was definitely a accomplished for him. But, you know, not happy. Kept it going. And, you know, Glendale, you and I kid around a few times calling the Valley of the Sun Bowl the Glendale Invitational. Mm -hmm. And because uh, yeah. they had been three times quite a few times. And Phoenix College once. But Glendale did it, I think, we saw three times. But for Coach Medowski, just to wrap that up, Jeff, I mean, yeah, did we get there three years in a row? And, it's tough now, an outside shot of it now, but again, you know, if you can just hang around in this game and get a win, like I said, the last game, 38-31, they were right there until the end because Phoenix College scored late to win that game. 
Derek Lavelle, whose father was a former NFL player, lined up to the near side as Bunch rolls out, throws on the run, and the catch is made. And I'll tell you what, Johnny Johnson has been a one-man wrecking crew on this drive yeah. for Scottsdale, and that is his third catch, and he made another catch that was negated by a penalty earlier. We're down to 15 seconds left to go here. And they're starting to get in the field, a, a reasonable field goal position here, field goal range. 15 seconds, trailing by five, and they're marching behind the right arm a bunch, and he throws, and it's knocked down by the corner, and it's incomplete. Isaiah Butler, who Coach Cazetto talked very highly. His older brother is at NAU. And Emmanuel, yep. Emmanuel Butler, and so a tremendous diving pass deflection there. Clock at 10, oh, uh, 10, 10 seconds and 7, 10.7 seconds. Thank you very little. And a five point lead for the team on defense, the host team, Phoenix College. Yeah, and the throws that Bunch has made, man, this kid's got a laser for an arm, Jeff. I touched on it a little bit. But out of the shotgun on third down and three, over the middle, and it's Johnson again to the 20. A pickup of eight yards and move the chains with 4.6 timeout Scottsdale. And you know what? 4.6, like you said, Jeff, their last timeout, and uh, I'm guessing Coach Mandowski isn't going to go for the end zone. I mean, it's a, it'd be a, right at the 20-yard line, so a 37-yard attempt, but well, it doesn't look like they're sending their kicking team over. They're talking to the offense, maybe a little showmanship, you know, the chess match that always goes on between coaches and sidelines and games, so... Doesn't look like they have their uh, their their kicker out there, so maybe they are gonna maybe they're gonna take one shot at the end zone. So a 37-yard attempt would be for Eric Lopez. He has hit from 43 this year. When we first started the game, we had a pretty strong wind blowing in from this goalpost, which is the south goalpost here at Phoenix College. Right now, it is calm. Yes. There is absolutely no wind, so. And right on cue, Macias. Well, okay, so it was showmanship because now they send Macias out. Again, good call by uh, Coach Madowski. Solid drive by the Artichokes to get in the field goal range. 4.6 seconds left to play. Here is the 37-yard attempt. Plenty of leg on it, but he left it wide to the right. No good, and the zeros are on the board. So the host team, Phoenix College, leading it 17 to 12. Bring out the band, it's halftime. We'll be back on MCTV Sports in just a moment. <laughs> 